The year was 1948. In the dry desert badlands of Mongolia, a group of paleontologists sent by the USSR Academy of Sciences uncovered several fossil bones of dinosaurs and turtles in what's known as the Nemect Formation. One of these remains included a trio of large and terrible talons, measuring nearly a meter in length, but no arms were attached to the weapons at the scene, shrouding them in mystery, a prehistoric cold case. Some, like Russian paleontologist Evan Gimali, thought the claws belonged to a giant turtle the size of an automobile, using its sharp and dangerous claws to mow down seaweed like wheat in a field. Thus, he gave it the name Therizinosaur, which means scythe lizard in Greek. It was also given the species name Chelonoformis, which means turtle formed. Then came along Anatoly Rostensvinsky, another Russian paleontologist, but he had a different verdict for the owner of these claws, making him the first scientist to propose something other than a turtle-like creature. He imagined the perpetrator as some kind of theropod dinosaur, likening it to Chelantosaurus, a large carnosaur with long claws and a slender snout. This was seemingly, without a doubt, a predator. But these dinosaur detectives needed more evidence, so in the late 1900s, even more scientists traveled to Mongolia in search for the missing link. In the 70s, we had enough to be completely sure that Therizinosaurus was a theropod of some kind, and when parts of the leg were found in 73, it didn't take long for Mongolian paleontologist Altangero Pearl to declare Therizinosaurus as a close relative to Segnosaurus, a plant-eating theropod found a bit further southeast. Further research since then has only cemented this comparison. Now we have our verdict. So let's take some mug shots and examine the evidence for this convicted, cold-blooded slasher. Even with the comparison to Segnosaurus, we don't have much to go off of. Thankfully, some other large Therizinosaurus have been found that we can use to estimate its size. Right now, we're looking at a roughly 30 foot or 9 meter long and 15 foot or 4.5 meter tall animal. Its weight is comparably light for its size, being put at around 4 tons. Still, this menace was the size of a double-decker bus. We don't even have a skull from Therizinosaurus, but thankfully most of its kind are pretty similar in that regard. They were small compared to their bodies and had a beak attached to the end. Another common factor is a long neck keeping the head up straight to balance out its barrel-shaped and vertically held body. The kicker here is the teeth. Other Therizinosaurs have teeth that weren't at all like those of meat-eating theropods, yet not completely well made for eating plants either. This begs the question, what exactly was it eating at the time of death? A theropod with long arms and claws the size of swords must have been a murderous carnivore of some kind. At least that's what you'd expect. But this perpetrator may not be as guilty as most may think. Therizinosaurus have widely been accepted as being herbivorous, with some arguing for a potentially omnivorous diet. Seems like our supposed culprit was a generalist feeder, munching on everything from tree leaves, pine cones, and anything else its long neck could get a hold of. Now, the body. As mentioned, it was held vertically, unlike the horizontal positions of other theropods. This was because of its short tail and long neck, which needed to be vertical to offset each other. A lot of talk about feathers have also been generated with Therizinosaurus. The main piece of evidence for this comes from Bipiosaurus, which was significantly smaller. We know it had a two-layered coat of hair-like filaments, one being a light furry coat and the other being much longer, more akin to quills. The extent to which Therizinosaurus itself had these is unknown. Some show it with a giant fur coat, others leave it completely scaly, which looks quite uncanny. It was probably somewhere in between. This fuzziness could have been used for display, but that may not have even been necessary, 
when we look at the longest and sharpest piece of evidence we have. The claws are what makes their Xenosaurus so infamous, and for good reason. As of now, they're the longest claws of any land animal to ever exist, and they're often shown as weapons of mass destruction, being used against anything that looked at it funny, though perhaps we were wrong. In fact, we know we are. Not too long ago, in 2023, a study was published that stress-tested the claws of Therizinosaurus, revealing that they were much weaker than we thought, not suitable for combat and even less so for mass murder. The most recent opinion is that they were used for display, with healthier individuals having longer and more impressive claws. They likely had a keratin sheath as well, meaning they could have been longer than the three feet estimates we have. But the claws still look frightening, so why weren't they specialized in combat? There is an Asaurus lived with some of the most dangerous predators of all time, Tyrannosaurs. One of the closest relatives of T-Rex, Tarbosaurus, was something we know Therizinosaurus dealt with, and even then its claws weren't strong enough to go toe to toe with one, and they didn't need to be. Tarbosaurus was no idiot, so seeing an animal taller than it was with six blades for fingers probably did the trick. No bloodshed necessary. As for its neighbors, Therizinosaurus lived with smaller Tyrannosaurs like Alloramus. There's also the tiny, single-clawed Mononychus, followed by Gigantoraptor from episode 30, various Titanosaurs, even the bizarre, flat-faced Dinochirus, and Sorolophus, a short, crested hadrosaur. Being known as the ancient Edward Scissorhands, Therizinosaurus has had a lot of spotlights. Most recently, it was in Jurassic World Dominion, and was sadly given the ruthless serial killer treatment a few times. It also has its very own episode in Chase by Dinosaurs with Nigel Marvin, where it's shown in a standoff with the Tarbosaurus. Prehistoric Planet also featured it for a small segment of the bothering hole scene, and some babies were given a short segment in a forest, as they attempted to reach a honey-filled beehive. In games, it's shown up in Ark Survival Evolved with a semi-accurate design. The Isle gives it a bit more accuracy, though at the expense of extreme fluff, giving it the nickname Murder Turkey. Well, it looks like there isn't a source walks away not guilty after all. No bloodthirsty slashers this Halloween, I'm afraid. Goes to show that viewing animals in the same light as we do fictional characters tends to have some not so good consequences for how we understand them. For some real spooks, head on over to twitch.tv slash paleoentertainment and join the Discord link below to hang out with nerds like you. Happy Halloween, and as always, keep your pencils and your claws sharp.